Good hello, welcome to Onion Skin. Previously we had been doing a bit of a deep dive into three-dimensional space in Harmony. Primarily we've been looking at the flat two-dimensional cards existing within three-dimensional depth. However, they were always facing the camera directly. What happens if we start to turn and rotate those shapes within three-dimensional space? All working files are available on the Patreon. And in this working file, I've got a single layer here with a whole bunch of different drawing substitutions in it. As I walk down the timeline, pretty simple stuff. I've just got like a, what will represent a Blake wall, one with a window and door, one that this is gonna be the ceiling. This is a third wall and this is the floor. So they're all on one layer, different substitutions. Up until now, everything we saw in part one was applicable for Harmony Essentials, Advanced and Premium, but it's from this point onwards that we're in premium only territory, specifically this nature of being able to rotate things in 3D space. However, despite that, I'm gonna try and do as much as possible without using the node view. From this drawing layer here, I'm going to right click it and go to Clone Selected Layers, Drawings Only. This is going to create a brand new layer that I can animate however I want, but it's going to be accessing the same library of previous drawings. I can see them all down here via the drawing substitutions window, one of the most important windows really by going to windows drawing substitutions. I'm going to repeat this process five times, one for each wall. They are now named accordingly and I can actually delete all of these exposures here and work down each one just choosing the substitution that I want. So wall one, wall one, wall two, wall two, wall three, wall three, floor, floor, ceiling. Ceiling, there we go. So now all five layers are up on the stage. I'm going to give each one of them a peg by selecting them all and pressing add peg. And I'm gonna spread each one out so I can see what I'm looking at. And now I'm going to go to the perspective view. With the perspective view open, I can go up to the rotation tool here. And normally, whatever angle I'm looking at, you can see that the rotation tool only lets me spin it on the Z axis, just around its middle. I need to go to the layer properties here and go down to the transformation tab. And there's a little switch at the beginning called enable 3D. Make sure you're doing this on the peg, by the way. And all this does is create the rotate in 3D option. You might think it's for just 3D in general, but remember in the last video, we were able to push and pull things in three dimensional space just fine. So have a look at this down in the rotation section, we've got angle Z and that's it. But when I enable 3D, ah, look at that. Scale gets a Z axis and rotation gets an X and Y. The rotation tool itself has also changed radically. It looks like a proper 3D programs one now, and I can rotate it all the way around. If I hover over each one of these axis, then I can lock it to that plane. And if I go down to the plus symbol here on the peg and press the middle button on these three at the bottom left of the interface, I can see the X, Y, and Z numbers if I want to punch in something a little bit more uh, you know, true, which is indeed the case for a lot of these shapes. The floor, for example, I want to rotate 90 degrees on the X so that it will resemble a floor. You see that? Same thing to the ceilings peg. So I'm just working through each one, enabling 3D, and then punching in 90 degrees on the angle that I want. So 90 on the first one there to make that flat. Wall three, that gets made 90 on the Y. Wall two with the door, I want to be the middle. So that's gonna stay where it is. Wall one, however, will will rotate. Uh, but this flat one, I still need to turn on 3D uh, for later. So I can head back to the camera view at this point. You can see that things are starting to look really interesting. There's a lot of perspective happening as it comes towards the camera. So using the regular position tool now, I'm just going to place everything into the shape of a box, working through each peg again. So. So keeping my side view open this time, I can see where the cross section is between the back wall and uh, my ceiling. So I wanna line up these corners just like that maybe with a little bit of crossover. And you would also notice now that in the previous video, we looked at the top and the side view and everything was just lines. It could have felt like it was just a representation of them, but that's not true at all. It literally is looking at the side as the ones that we've rotated, we can now just see them clear as day. So let me grab the floor therefore, line that up with the dimensions of the ceiling. However, it needs to be on the ground, doesn't it? Wall three. So it's like assembling a little box. Also consider you can select the layers directly from here as well. Just don't forget to press B to be able to get up to its peg. All right, there we go. A three dimensional room has been made. Just like before, a camera can be added with a peg on it. And if this camera's peg also has its 3D enabled, we can rotate that in three dimensional space as well and use it to look all around our room. 
You'll notice my pivot is in the middle of the screen right now. So if I pick up the pivot from above and place it right on the tip there, now I can look around through the eyes of the camera. Pretty cool. What if I wanted to move the entire room though? Because so far, each one of these panels has its own peg, right? So I'd have to grab them all and hope that it works. But like that can <laughs> instead, you probably guessed it. Everything gets grouped into one peg with its 3D turned on. And now there we go. This whole room has become in itself a three dimensional set. It's just a box that we can scale, place and move around just like any real 3D object. That means characters can be drawn and animated into this scene. And as long as they're attached to the peg of the room, they will always sit on the floor wherever you move the scenery around. It's also worth mentioning that with this camera peg, if I scale it, we can increase and decrease the amount of perspective in the scene. This is really heavily emphasized through the top view. If I squish it in from the top and bottom there, see that? It gets really deep or really shallow even more heavily emphasized by the maintained size tool. Remember, this thing would scale size as it moved in and out, sort of canceling itself out. What if you use that on the lens of the camera itself? It turns out, well, it doesn't stay, look at it, it does that crazy warped force perspective, like penny drop, someone's just had a crazy realization moment. Very cool, I like this thing, yeah. But what if, for example, I have a two-dimensional character in my 3D scene, and I don't want to break the illusion. I want to keep him flat, right? Uh, this is where nodes do come in for sure, and this is the ortho lock. The ortho lock is a peg type node, goes above the character, and look at that, you see how now it's facing towards the camera? And as I move the scene around now, wherever I go, you can see he's always looking at me, no matter what. Rotate this all the way around to the back. Hello. So we're just about there. Last thing I want to mention, just a little disclaimer, is because we've been bouncing back and forth between the main transform tool and the dedicated transform tools quite a bit. I could do an entire video on just this subject, but just to give you a little tease as to why they're different, this thing is a Swiss army knife. It will move everything as a unit around a central point like this, all around one pivot, right? This rotate tool, when I start moving things here, Look at that. No, see, I've got every individual peg selected, not a master one, and it moves each of them around their own independent pegs, which gets some pretty wild effects. Maybe this is what you want. Maybe it isn't. Depends on the tool for the job. All right, that's going to be it for now. Bit of an update. You might have noticed, <laughs> once again, uploads have been a little bit sporadic lately. A little bit. Because uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, live teaching and personal tutoring and things like that. So I very much have been focusing on onion skin based content, but not as much of it has been on YouTube as I would have liked. But I am working really hard to try and amend this and get more time to be putting in here. I might need a little bit of accountability. So if you don't see any uploads happening for, you know, every couple of weeks or so, uh, how I'm going to need some like hammering in the comments. If I feel bad <laughs> I'm letting people down, then it's more likely going to go get knocked up to the top of the priority list. Yay. There, there is a ridiculous list of things that I still need to cover. The video idea list, more than a hundred long, at least. I really want to get into it. Hope that, yeah, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll see you soon.